a weather map of Western Europe in January 2075. This is also a full 12 years after the Gulf Stream has stopped. Remember, the Gulf Stream is essentially the thing that keeps Europe from completely freezing over. You might notice that Europe is basically the same latitude as Canada, but it isn't just a bunch of tundra. A lot of Europe has pretty okay weather at times, even though they are so high up. But this is without the Gulf Stream, which means all of that continent is essentially going to become Canada. So in this universe, we have a Paris sitting at negative 7 degrees Celsius. That's only 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, we have London at negative 15 degrees Celsius or 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Doesn't sound too fun. Even a city as far low as Madrid is sitting at negative 8. Possibly that could be because it's higher up. I mean, not on the globe. I mean, like elevation wise. It sits 2100 feet above sea level. Barcelona is not experiencing that same thing. They are more coastal, obviously, and next to the Mediterranean. Even the Italian city of Rome is at 2 Celsius. I'm honestly afraid to go further north because I can't even imagine what the Nordics would be. Actually, I can. I'm pretty sure the Nordics become completely uninhabitable at this point. I mean, Oslo, the capital of Norway, is at negative 21. I mean, I guess that's still habitable, but that's not going to be fun. Meanwhile, Iceland, negative 30. I like how this is just showing the weather map of this alternative universe. Now, can you imagine the immigration maps? There'd be a huge flow of people leaving this continent entirely for warmer weather. Even Morocco is not really that warm. The funny thing is, Europe might be frozen over, but the Sahara Desert might become a paradise. Is this what happens in that movie, The Day After Tomorrow? The twin sons, or basically, if Alexander the Great had two boys. In this universe, he obviously didn't die without an heir. Now, remember, Alexander the Great conquered all of this during his time reigning as king. Also, big thanks to his pops. He really set the groundwork for him to be able to do this. But obviously, in a universe where Alexander actually had heirs and didn't just, like, have his empire collapse after he died, they'd be able to conquer a lot more. So it looks like they decided to turn their sights towards most of Europe, also the northern part of Africa. They even expanded even further eastward, kind of, also north of the Caspian Sea as well. Wait, I'm now just realizing it's not twins that he had. Uh, first of all, Alexander lived a lot longer in this universe. He died in history 323 BC, but in this universe, he made it to 303. Remember, it's BC, we're counting down. So he had 20 extra years, and what he decided to do with that extra time is attack Egypt, attack the Arabian Peninsula, move all the way down to modern day Libya and Tunisia. This is actually called the Campaign of Carthage, took over Carthage, moved way deep into India. Then when he passed, his son took over, and for the next few decades, the son decided, yeah, he was just going to keep it going, keep up the family tradition. Moved through modern day Morocco, got all of Hispaniola, conquered the Gauls, if they were even Gauls at this point, the Germans kind of. Obviously, there's no Rome in this universe, that's for sure. Or maybe there is, it's just going to be really different than what we know. Maybe it's now Alexander's son that doesn't have a son. Alexander the Great doesn't have a grandson, and then just this collapses. Man oh man, talk about big Greece. A future Earth with an international high-speed rail system. Oh man, I thought I couldn't get any more excited. I mean, in a way, Europe pretty much already has this. It's just like all the other continents that are trying to catch up. Well, China and Japan as well, but yeah, they just have to wait for everyone else to catch up. <coughs> California. Actually, all the U.S. I don't want to single out just my state, but it's it's annoying. Oh, I always got to mention that. I always got to just talk about how annoyed I am about this is my freaking high-speed train. So in this universe, there is a single line that can take you from London all the way to New York City. That's called the one or one. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to go Californian rules the way we talk about highways. It is high-speed rail, which means it goes 400 kilometers per hour. Let's see if I'm doing this math correctly. The distance is basically 10,000 kilometers. Divide that by four. 400 kilometers per hour. Also, it only takes you about one whole day. You'd be on the train for 25 hours. That's not too bad, although you can take a flight for five hours from London to New York. Actually, no, it's way faster than that, isn't it? No, no, it's a, I think it's about five hours. The only problem with that route, too, is that you're really not seeing a whole lot. Like, once you get outside of Moscow, you're going to be in a lot of just Russia the whole time. And then after Russia, you're just kind of in the northern of uh, U.S., Canada. You do make a stop by Fargo and Minneapolis, but that's that's nice. Line 2 can take you from Lyon, France, all the way down to Nigeria. Not quite as impressive of a route, but still cool. Okay, I don't know how we're going to do this one, but Melbourne, Australia, all the way through Indonesia, passes by Jakarta, goes through Bangkok, all the way up to meet that Line 1 if you want to get to London or New York. That looks like it'd be another maybe 24-hour journey. Maybe a little bit longer. now, about 24 hours. There's also Nantes, France. You can make down to Southeast Asia, Ho Chi Minh City. Oh, it actually breaks off. You can go down to the Arabian Peninsula as well. Man, this 
be so cool. I, I would, I don't mean, I don't know if I would actually do it. 24 hour train ride, but it would be nice. I feel like maybe planes would be worth it more. I mean, I'm a kind of a go, go, go sort of guy. The amount of international work that we'd all have to do for this though, like that's the big issue. Maybe if like aliens come down and force us to do it, then we'll do it. That's a fun thought experiment. The EU or European Union, but in this universe, communism won the Cold War. So the de facto capital would be in Paris or the Commune of France. It seems like the Soviets or whoever is controlling these communist states have changed around some borders a little bit. We don't have a Portugal and Spain. We just have the Federation of Iberia. Of course, we do still have a Yugoslavia. They were dragged into that EU. Are we sure that Yugoslavia wouldn't still collapse even if the Soviets won the Cold War? I don't know. These seem to just really not like each other, not get along too well. We've got a slightly thicker Hungary and kind of a strange looking Romania. Poland is having a bit of an issue. I think Russia just, well, first of all, Russia didn't collapse in this universe, so there's no Ukraine and Belarus. Why is it called Russian state? Wouldn't that just be the, the Soviet Union? Or do they still end up collapsing later on? I don't know. Just communism won out. This is also a world where East Germany won, by the way, so they were the ones to integrate West Germany. They also have their old borders back too, which is interesting. Poland is getting the short end of the stick. I'm not sure if Britain is exactly going to be allowed to leave this union. Oh, Ireland got Northern Ireland back. Man, oh man, and just look at those cities. Is this like slightly into the future, it looks like? Uh, Athens, very nice. Madrid is definitely looking fancier. I'm not sure what is going on in Berlin. Ah, this is coming from the Kaiserreich timeline where Germany won World War I, but then they ended up losing World War II. That explains why the Russian state is called that and not the Soviet Union. So I guess in this Kaiserreich scenario, pretty much just everyone turned to communism. Well, not everyone. All of the Nordics are still hardcore into that monarchy thing. A Vampire's Guide to New York City or the territorial control map of all of the different boroughs. Are the vampires pretty much like the mafia at this point? All right, so this lineage is uh, actually founded by Vlad Dracula. They've pretty much been banished to all of greater Staten Island. Meanwhile, House of Lilith, founded by Lilith of Eden, um, they're doing it a little bit nicer. I mean, I think, I mean, they have a, a lot of Brooklyn. There's the Thousand League Society, which is running Queens right now. Global headquarters is currently in Singapore and Hong Kong. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to attempt to pronounce this one. It was also founded by an unknown woman. These are like some French vampires, and they are currently in a gang war against the Thousand League uh, Society, as well as uh, that their global headquarters is Mexico City. So they're fighting over a little bit of territory, specifically Queens and the Midtown area of Manhattan. Neutral zones or the gray zones, feeding is prohibited in parks, airports, and other major public spaces. Ah, so this is where they hunt for humans, I'm guessing. This is where they're like both allowing each other, each gang to eat other humans and stuff, I guess. Or possibly also recruit new members, right? Is this a world where Romania basically takes over New York City? I feel like vampires in New York might just end up adding to the tourism already that New York gets. The year is April 1989 and Chernobyl was like 10 times worse. Of course, this is still slightly before the Cold War, although I would make a guess that the Soviets are definitely still going to collapse after this. They're going to collapse in a way worse extent. Looks like everything within like a hundred mile radius of Chernobyl is just called the death zone now. Everything with a gray line across it is now just a restricted zone. Oh, that's because all these cities you see with a line strike through it, uh, they are gone. They no longer exist. There's a couple of evacuated settlements and or evacuated evacuated capitals. Poland still exists. Oh, you know what's happening? The Soviets are now like invading a bunch of nations or possibly a bunch of nations are now invading the Soviets. In the case of the Caucasus Mountain region, it does seem like there's like some sort of civil war. Dagestan's risen up. Of course, as always, Azerbaijan and Armenia have to fight each other. What's funny is these people weren't even affected by Chernobyl exactly, but like the ripple effect it had on the map, obviously it's just like a huge domino collapsing. Even parts of Finland and Sweden have been messed up. Stockholm is just done. These places are like uninhabitable at this point just because that that's where most of their population comes from. So everything behind the Iron Curtain is just screwed. Well, Hungary's good. Also, this has caused a much earlier Yugoslavia collapse. Meanwhile, the Western powers or NATO at this time just has to sit and watch. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like there won't even be a Russia after this. Like the Soviet Union is just gonna be complete anarchy. This is a pretty terrifying scenario that possibly could have happened. World War One, but everyone won. Everyone won. What if everyone won World War One? Uh, to start things off, Germany is basically become the Holy Roman Empire again. The collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire is still here, but um, looks a lot uglier. So by everyone winning, everyone has to get what they want. And I think that's why these borders are so chaotic. So Slovakia is free from Czechoslovakia. Austria wanted this part of Italy, so uh, they get that because that's what they that's what they wanted. Is this even a Switzerland or are they now just called 5-6? Oh, there's a key up here. That's right. Yeah, Switzerland is 5. Uh, 6 is Switch uh, Liechtenstein. I almost called them Switzerland 2. Switzerland 2.0. Liechtenstein looks like they became a giant triangle. 
cool. That's nice. Oh, that's right. Germany wanted this part of France, so of course they had to get it. <laughs> uh, France is just completely divided. The Nordics didn't really want anything, so everything stays the same there. Russia wanted this part of Germany. Uh, Poland does exist. Uh, this part goes to Germany too. Ukraine is free. Belarus is basically free. Uh, there's so much border gore, I can't even handle it. Bunch of new nations have popped up uh, out of the, you know, the zone in between, just north of the Caucasus Mountains, in between Black Sea and Caspian Sea. Basically have Kazakhstan here. There is no Ottomans. Oh, that's right, because all the nations wanted to divide up the Ottomans. So Turkey exists. I think Greece got get gets a lot of this. Did they get Constantinople back? There's a Syria and an A Syria. Why did I say that so weird? Iraq and Arabia. Pretty chill in the UK. Uh, they just lost Northern Ireland. Ireland got all that. Oh man, can you even imagine what's going on in North America? Unfortunately, the Americas are not included on this map, but did Mexico take back like California and Texas? Oh, all the stripes are new nations. So India already got their independence after World War One. So did Australia and New Zealand. West Africa or the former colonies of France just seems to be its own thing. Oh yeah, like Russia's just completely collapsed. China's just chilling. China would love this world. I mean, they're still dealing with a lot of chaos at this point if it's 1920, but maybe they'll pull it together. In a world where Christopher Columbus was actually right. While Christopher Columbus is often celebrated as the discoverer of Western routes to Asia, numerous early crossings of the Atlantic Ocean are known in history. Let's start with the first one here in Egypt. This was 600 BC. They decided to travel down through the Red Sea and around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. From there, they ended up making it to the islands in the Pacific and Australia. Egyptians basically now maybe worshipping kangaroos. And then they double backed around to find their home continent again, wrapping up through the Mediterranean and making their way back home. There's also this Chinese explorer that came out of Nanjing. Of course, they got all of the Japanese islands, went up north, eventually discovered Cornwall in the UK, found France and was like, oh, we're out of here. They literally did a beeline back. They saw France and they were like, no, I don't know what's up with that. Of course, we can't forget about the Vikings who traditionally went to Iceland and Greenland, but after that, they found Siberia, which I'm now just realizing how similar Siberia looks to uh, like the northern part of Canada and this bay and everything. Okay, you changed. Okay, so everything, then they started going down. Oh yeah, here's literally Newfoundland. And then they just went back. Is that what they thought they were? I don't even know. Maybe they didn't even like guess where they were. Probably just thought they were in a new land. Okay, so nothing really changed with those Vikings there. Then we had this guy come out of the British Isles, make it to Japan. Did he just stay there too? Why are the Philippines turned on their side like this? New Zealand would definitely not be left off quite as many maps, that's for sure in this universe. I can say that at least. Ah, so the solid lines that we saw here represent Christopher Columbus's voyages, but the dashed are the earlier explorers. Is it safe to say we would have had earlier explorers? Who knows, it's definitely something to think about. The Kingdom of Burgundy, if it existed in the 19th century, this is specifically in 1815, but uh, this would definitely make a big difference. First of all, there's a German confederation there, and of course the Kingdom of France. Has Napoleon already risen up? Maybe Napoleon actually created this, just decided to troll a little bit of the world. Remember the Burgundian state was a real life place in the 15th and 16th centuries. It was also regarded as a major power in the region as well, even if it really was just smashed between France and the Holy Roman Empire, and man, these borders, they're pretty disgusting. No wonder they got rid of them. But these borders in the new universe don't look even nearly as bad, although I don't know what this is. I guess they got something going on right there. This is definitely making me imagine like a universe where obviously the German Confederation unites into Germany, and then we have Italy down here as well. Although Germany had to defeat France to be able to do that, does it just become a lot easier for them to unite in this world? But just imagine the world wars where there's this long nation separating uh, Germany from France. What if Germany is allied to these guys? Maybe Burgundy helps Germany invade France, or maybe they're a neutral power. What if they act like a Switzerland kind of? I doubt it. They're in like way too important of a location. Somebody is definitely getting invaded. For sure if they're allied to Germany. If they're allied to France, this doesn't make really much of a difference either. Germany's just going to attack all these lands like they did throughout history. <laughs> Look at that big old Luxembourg though. Maybe there's a chance that like they break out of Burgundy and just become thick Luxembourg. I like the thought of that. Here is five TikTok dances you can do to help Burgundy fight France. <laughs> no, please. No, I can't take this anymore. I guess we can confirm Burgundy would maybe be on the side of Germany. Who knows? What if the German monarchy moved eastward after WW1? So as you can see, this is definitely post World War One because we have the Weimar Republic here. Also, there's no Austria-Hungary. Well, there is. It's just separated. There's also still a Poland, though. This German Empire is not just basically Poland role-playing. And of course, they still have their famous Prussian lands. I love how they basically maintained their shape, too. They just kind of migrated eastward. Although they don't really have this Danish hat that they had before. It just looks like they kind of got a haircut or something. Wait, so in this universe, does the Weimar Republic still end up becoming Nono Germany? And then do the Nono Germans have to attack this monarchy, in a sense? I want to see what 
this would look like after WW2 now. And big thanks to the patrons. I am the kidnapper. I oofed Drew since no one paid his ransom. This channel's now North run by AI. Montenegro. Australia is Zane real. Jones, I'm not a Tina. No. Twenty dollars is a lot. True. Asher, two hundred. Norwegian. Amateur. You are a tiny garbage. Good old Jerry. Isaiah. John Denver. The Polar Bear. The Wayne. The Mexican. Why am I doing this? 